So for more on how investors should digest the sell-off, let's bring in Baird Managing Director and Market Strategist Michael Antonelli. Mike, what a pleasure to see you. It's been a minute. Um, so yeah. I, I guess when a sell-off like this happens, it helps to contextualize it, right? We haven't seen one like this in a while. It's true. But is it the start of something bigger or is this just a one-day blip? At least we have something to talk about because the market's <laughs> basically gone straight up for, since January. So I, I'm excited that we get to talk about this, and I'm, I'm glad to be on with you guys again. Uh, yeah, it's, that is the question that I'll write about, that I'll, I'll speak with clients about, that we will talk uh, right here about is, is this the start of something bigger? And certainly there are indicators you should be looking at to to uh, to wonder whether that's true or not. The dollar is one of them. You guys mentioned the dollar briefly. That will be something we will continue to need to monitor when the dollar strengthens st stock struggle. It's been like that for a while now. Uh, and technicians are keen to point that out. So I think you'd want to watch the dollar for sure. The VIX has got some quirks about it right now with options expirations and, and some open interest at certain strikes. So that's that certainly had a crazy move today, but I think there's some options action there. Uh, I, I do think it's probably time for a pullback. I think it's time that you get one of your garden variety 5% pullbacks. And my friends, you get three of those every single calendar year, all of them. And Mike, I'm curious how you, you think this might change kind of the narrative here. You know, in, in there seemed to be a story, we heard from a lot of strategists, at least more optimistic ones, Michael, and the kind of narrative you heard was, as rare and tricky as it is, it looks like, you know, Jay Powell has landed, has engineered the soft landing, and inflation's cooling, and the cuts are coming. When you saw that January CPI print today, and I guess, my, you know, you see GDP and labor market and CPI, do you think maybe that storyline has been kind of, has been upended here? Not only has it been upended, Josh, is, is it actually no landing? It, are, we talk about soft and hard. Is it actually no landing? Uh, there's also this view of trampoline landing. I think one of my friend, my friend Oliver kind of pushed that one out. What trampoline is that, Michael? Landing. What is that? That is a new one for me. Trampoline landing. What is that? I, one? I like it. I, I, I like it. It's this notion that we we kind of hit the ground and then bounce right back immediately. Like uh, we did have that kind of two quarter negative quarter back in 2022. We just bounced immediately. So trampoline, we're back right back to 3% growth. Uh, I like either of those takes at this point. And CPI, as I've said many times before, years ago, I, I'm still getting no credit for it. This is like the end of World War II. This is not like the 1970s. And at the end of World War II, inflation at 20% and came down, but it didn't come down in a straight line. It bounced its way down and that's what's happening right now. Post-crisis, we're bouncing our way back down to 2%. We should not have ever expected it to go from nine to two in a straight line. No landing, trampoline landing. I think we need to shift the narrative to those from soft or hard. So what does all of that mean then for stocks, right? Especially coming off an earnings season where growth looks pretty good and it's not just the Magnificent yeah. Seven where we're seeing growth. Yeah, I think the narrative for stocks is still quite good based on the economy, based on all the things that were tailwinds from last year. Remember, this is an election year that will certainly start to take all the oxygen in the room uh, as, as the year goes by. One thing you would notice if you followed my work or some other strategist's work is that the first quarter of election years are typically volatile. They're typically like this. You're, you would expect the volatility to be in the first few months of the year. Why? Well, the market's still trying to come to grips with the candidates and the policies and all the things that surround an election. So this is not, frankly, all that surprising to me. Uh, I, I do think that the magnitude of today's move was eye-opening. It just goes to show people were ready to hit the sell button. Uh, but, but I think the narrative around where stocks can go this year are still quite good based on a bunch of economic indicators that are still strong. We're looking at 3% GDP growth, wage growth, all these things. In terms of risk though, to that call, kind of, I don't know, downside risk, Michael, where do you put yeah. sort of geopolitics there? And are you, are you in any way surprised, Michael, by the way, despite that you look around the world right now, Russia, Ukraine, Israel, Hamas, yeah. Red Sea, markets have basically shrugged it off. I get this, it's a good question, Josh. I get this question all the time in my career, all the time from clients. I, I get them live, I get them from friends. I get it all, geopolitical events tend to have short-term impacts on the stock market. You could look all the way back to, I don't know, let's talk about the Cuban Missile Crisis. It had a very small impact on the stock market, very, very small. That was basically the closest the world has ever come to nuclear annihilation. Uh, so geopolitical does tend to have very, very limited impacts. And I, and I say to clients, you know, Apple Computer still sells iPhones and Costco still sells hot dogs and Starbucks still makes lattes even when there are hot spots around the world. And that's what you really, really need to focus on. So I am quite unsurprised by the market shrugging this kind of stuff off. What are the downside risks? An economic slowdown. That, that to me is, is, is the real downside risk. And I watch for it all the time. 
Mike, I feel like you and I have even had this conversation before yeah. about geopolitics. Yeah. Getting a little yeah. deja vu. Great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Good job.